So this company had a process where they said, you don't have to pay us anything. We will install our black box, a reactor in your company, and we will reduce the organic load in the wastewater. And if your taxes, because of the organic load, go down, you give us 50% of what goes down. Okay, but anyway, I can't find the company. If we, if you, we look for Atranova and Ebonex currently, you don't find the company with a current uh, site in the internet. I, I mentioned before that in reduction process, it's very important that we have the available three-dimensional electrodes. At the moment, we don't have three-dimensional anodes available three-dimensional electrodes that we can use to oxidize species. So this, this work, published recently by the group of uh, uh, Frank Walsh, it's an interesting work. They deposited PbO2, lead oxide, on reticulated vit vitreous carbon. And they, they are proposing that if we produced a film of lead dioxide, that covers completely the carbon, then we might have an excellent anode material because then we will have a three-dimensional material. But we are starting to do something like that in our laboratory. It's very difficult because you have the reticulated vit vitreous carbon. It's very difficult to make sure that you have also a good film of lead dioxide inside the material. It's very easy to get it on the surface. It's difficult to get inside the material as you make the material thicker. Okay, Brazilian contributions. Many more. Now we have more than seven, at least 70. And the first contribution was back in 1998. And my name is the last one of the Ali here. So this is actually a contribution. It was led by Professor Ederio Bidoya, who is an ex-student of this department, also an ex-student of this graduate program, who is a professor at UNESP Rio Claro at the Biosciences Institute. Uh, and the one that has the most number, the, the highest number of citations, is again a work by Rodney Bertazzoli, published back in 2005, with an ex-student. He was a, a master's student, Evederio, and then did his PhD, his PhD thesis with Bertazzoli in Campinas. I'll show you now some contributions from our laboratory in the area of electrooxidation. And as I mentioned before, we like to compare the performance of different materials. So the, this is a, uh, well, let me show you the systems that we use. So the systems that we use I is we have, because of transport limitations, we like to work with flow systems. So we have a pump. This is the, the, the electrochemical reactor. This is the reservoir. And there is a flow meter here and there is a bypass, and there is a power source back in here. What is the appearance of the reactors? This is the appearance of a reactor. This is a simple reactor where we have a lead dioxide electrode that is prepared in the laboratory, and it's, it has a nickel cathode on each side. So the solution enters one side, solution enters one side and leaves on the other side of the reactor and we work as you will see with flow rates as high as seven liters per minute here is another example here we are using a diamond electrode boron dopa diamond electrode uh, that uh, was prepared by congeals in germany it has a boron content in this range and the cathodes here are, st are stainless steel plates. So now you have an idea of the systems that we use. And I'll show you now some results. 
this is a paper that was published back in, in 2009. Uh, actually, those two students, Diego and Thiago, uh, were uh, undergraduate students. So this is the result of Iniciação Científica, scientific initiation, as we say, in, in Brazil. That was published uh, back in 2009. And what we are trying to do here is to remove a dye from solution what we call a simulated wastewater at that time. We don't use that term any longer because a dye wastewater from textile industry is actually much more complex than the simple solution that has one dye and one salt. So we don't use the term any longer. So we want to, so the dye, the te textile industry generates a lot of waste because, and the dyes and the wastewater that contains dyes might, might be a big problem. First, because if, if it the concentration for some dyes it's only one milligram per liter, the color is already very intense, so the light will not penetrate, and that will cause a lot of problems for the microorganisms in the water. And many of the dyes um, are health problems too. So that's why we investigate removal of dyes. And here what we are doing is comparing uh, two electrodes, the diamond and the lead oxide. As you can see here, at that time we used a very small diamond electrode, and which means that the experiments were very long, so the students had to have a lot of patience, patience because the, the, the electrode was very small, so it took a long time for the ex for the for the removal of the of the color. What I'm showing here is color removal. Okay, so this is one and three is the behavior of the diamond electrode. Two and four is the result obtained with the lead dioxide electrode. And here what we have is in the presence <coughs> here is just the, s the dye solution with the salt if you add chlorine you have a very very good improvement as you can see using this charge you remove all the color of the solution if you use the, la the, the diamond electrode and if you add chlorine to the solution so what you're doing is indirect oxidation, okay? And the diamond electrode is much better than the PbO2 electrode. And you see that there is a very good improvement in the decolorization when you add the, chlor the chloride ion to the solution. And here what we are showing is, as you can see here, to remove the color so this is the removal of the color. To remove the color, we use one ampere hour per liter when we add the chloride ion to the solution. This goes down to by a factor of almost 90% <coughs> or goes down to about 10% of the original value. If we use the lead dioxide, as you can see, we can't remove the color. With the diamond, we can remove the color even when we don't add the chloride. So the diamond electrode is much better. And these results here are for the organic load. Uh, this work was done by, by Jose, Mario, Jose Maria Aquino and Gabriel Pereira, who is sitting here. And in this case, we are working with a real textile effluent from a local industry. And looking at this table, you can see, well, when we have a real effluent, we have a lot of things. It's a complex mixture of dyes, additives, electrolytes, etc., fibers. So that's why there is a large difference, for, for instance, between the organic load before and after filtration, because you're removing whatever is not soluble. Okay? And the turbidity also goes down. 
here again we are comparing two electrodes we are looking at only at decolorization now and again as you can see the diamond electrode has a much better performance than the lead dioxide electrode and again for a specific condition if we add uh, chloride to the medium we increase also the performance of the electrode the performance of the electrode gets better okay the same happens for the lead dioxide when you add the chloride you almost were not able to take the, co the, the color away now we are able to remove almost 100 percent of the color but we added chloride so with the lead dioxide we were able to remove almost 100 percent of the color but look at the organic load using the times of electrolysis that we used we are not able to remove the organic load when we use the diamond electrode because of it of its oxidation capability we are able to remove also the organic load but we are working at 55 degrees Celsius and we were surprised when we worked at 55 degrees Celsius and when we added chloride ions to the solution we found out that we had degradation of the diamond electrode problems and what is the problem the substrate here is niobium we also do uh, corrosion studies of niobium in our laboratory we did in the past and we do of metals related to niobium like titanium etc that are called valve metals and we know that these metals like aluminum also have a very high tendency to grow oxides on the surface 